Hey guys, sometimes as a YouTuber, you have to do things that you really don't want to do. For a good while now, folks have been asking me to review flexible build plates, and I've always resisted. I mean, what's the point? Getting stuff off the build plate isn't exactly difficult, right? And a flexible plate is just one more thing to clean. However, fate intervened recently as I received an email from Wambam Systems asking me if I'd like to review their flexible build plate. Well, I didn't want to, that's the truth. But you guys keep asking, and Wham Bam were kind enough to offer, so I reluctantly agreed. The box I received was small, compact, and well structured, with the content well packaged. Amongst stickers, sandpaper, and information were some crisp, thin metal sheets. And yes, they seemed pretty flexible. There was also some magnetic strips, and these seemed fairly strong. Now, at this point, I did the thing that most of us hate doing. I watched an instructional video, in this case, on the Wham Bam website. And if you're going to buy one of these products, then I strongly urge you to do the same. If you don't prepare properly, then this system may well fail, and you'll have wasted your money. For instance, I soaked my build plate in IPA for 24 hours before I did anything else, as it needs to be very clean. And that's the sort of informative tip that you need when you install this product. I then went on to sand down my build plate, ensuring that it was planar, as well as a little roughed up. After some more cleaning, I did the fiddliest part of this process, sticking the adhesive magnet to the very clean build plate. I confess I wasn't millimetre perfect, but I was close enough, and after rubbing with the enthusiasm of a teenage boy, I then had to do the hardest part of this whole process. Nothing. I had to wait a minimum of 72 hours to ensure that the adhesive had fully bonded. And again, don't skimp on this step unless you like wasting your money. Personally, I gave it a whole week. And then, just to annoy me a little further, I had to calibrate my printer to take into account the thicker depth of the plate. This is a crucial step. If you skimp on anything, don't skimp on this stage. I never really wanted to do any of this flexible plate business in the first place, so I decided to punish it with a tricky print. Those of you that enjoyed the Netflix series Squid Game might recognize this. I made it for a friend, but I've shared it on Thangs and Thingiverse if you're interested. The point is, this is a thin print, and to be awkward, I decided to print it flat. My evil plan appeared to be working perfectly. As I suspected, the thin print flexed along with the plate. However, I felt and heard the tiny breaking of the bond between the print and the flexible plate. Sure enough, the print slid away with ease undamaged by its warping adventures. Okay, there was a little extra cleanup involved, but actually it wasn't all that bad. Quietly impressed, I decided to place a small ring smack in the middle of the build plate. You know, the spot where it flexes the least. I cackled cunningly as my Sonic 4K printed, and I awaited the certain failure of the Wham Bam plate. It popped straight off. This minimal thinking wasn't getting me anywhere, so I decided to fill the plate, and using a wonderful design from our buddies at Archville and Games, I did just that. The printer printed, showing no signs of rejecting the prints, and sure enough, they came free of the build plate easily. So let's look at this a little more closely. As long as you've selected the right size plate for your printer, everything should fit perfectly 
and bonding the flexible plate with the adhesive strip supplied works very well. Be sure to follow the instructions carefully and you should have a product that works. I can't speak for long term usage yet, but so far it's looking good. The prints certainly seem to have no trouble sticking to the flexible world plate. I did lightly scuff mine as the instructional video recommended and so far all of my prints have bonded perfectly to this flexible plate. It's fair to say there's a little more cleaning involved, but overall not much really. The plate is so thin it's almost trivial. The flexible plate wipes clean with ease and the build plate gets the normal treatment though it's probably best not to submerge your plate in a wash and cure machine for long periods, as IPA may affect the adhesive strip, but quick dips should be fine. Do you know what? It actually works. I was all set to dislike this product. I was confident it would prove to be wasted effort. But flexing the plate really does break the bond between print and plate with great ease. For the most part, prints drop from the plate, and as long as you don't go insane with the flexing, it will come back straight and true for regular reuse. So, have I changed my mind about flexible plates? Well, actually I have. I genuinely like this Wham Bam system. It does exactly what it claims it does, and as long as you follow the preparation instructions carefully, you should have no trouble with yours. Don't get me wrong, I'm not planning on fitting one of these to all my printers, but I can no longer openly speak against them. If, like me, you're happy enough with a metal scraper, then carry on. But if you find this tricky, and, dare I say it, if you want an easier time of things, and I have to admit, it really is very easy to use, then I'm happy to inform you that the Wham Bam flexible system truly works. So that's it. I hope you found this video as interesting as I did guys. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to drop me a line. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.